Here, good morning, uh, Roya. Good morning. It's, it's, it's just all happening daily, isn't it? Um, <laughs> are we surprised by this interaction, do you think? And did it actually happen, do we feel? What, 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 what is your making of all It of did this? happen, and it was our front page big story in the Sunday Times yesterday. So my understanding was that King Charles was extremely keen to still go ahead and attend the COP27 summit in Egypt. And, of course, the Queen gave that wonderful address to COP26 last year in Glasgow. So there is precedent for monarchs, reigning monarchs, to address it. He was very keen to still go. This is a man who was a world leader on environmental issues. He, he sought advice from Liz Truss and he was told, we, we think it's best you don't go. So it does come as a big surprise and I think it'll be a, a big disappointment to the King, given he is a world leader in that sphere. And also he'd acknowledged publicly the day after the Queen died. He understands the restrictions now of his new role. Yeah. He does things differently. But he could have gone along and just said, you know, come on, world leaders. There's work to do here. I wish you luck, like the Queen did. So, so why? That is what we, we haven't got clarity on from 10 Downing Street. There is a suggestion that the, uh, the government may look to tone down some of our commitments to net zero, and that would, could have been a difficult message for, for the king to deliver. But I think he wouldn't have had to have done that. He could have just gone and given a very kind of, you know, neutral, the ties that bind these countries together um, address. I, I think it could have been done, and I, it's a curious decision from the government. Yeah, very, very much so. And undoubtedly, it will unfold at some point, maybe as to why. But yes, it's a strange, a strange decision, considering we know he's very passionate about the, the subject. Um, we also saw the, the, the royal portrait at the weekend, Roya. Yeah. Um, what do you make of it then? Uh, it's a lovely picture by, by Chris Jackson. And I thought the... This was, I mean, they all look very happy. This was taken on the eve of the Queen's funeral, mm. so um, before a big state reception at Buckingham Palace. It's in, the, the timing is interesting, it being released yes, uh, yesterday. The, we are going to see the King and Queen consort appear today for the first time since publicly since Royal Morning ended up in Scotland with two engagements. I was told that this picture was released now to show unity and continuity between the King and his heir. So it's all about that sort of future vision, you know, the, the late Queen is gone, this is the future of the, of the monarchy. Uh, and I suppose, you know, um, you have septuagenarian monarch and, and a younger heir. Mm -hmm, of course. Well, Prince William is now charging his uh, father rent, so the relationship has to be good, <laughs> if, if, if that's to be believed. <laughs> this is a very interesting role reversal. So as part of the whole shake-up in, in um, you know, the hierarchy and, and the line of succession, William now takes on his father's role as Duke of Cornwall, and with that comes the Duchy of Cornwall. What is that? It's an enormous way, the portfolio of land and, and property and interest, mostly across the southwest of the country. But it includes Highgrove House, which is Charles's private home in Gloucestershire. And as part of that, he, under a, a lease, an interesting lease arrangement, has to pay his son £700,000 a year as part of that lease. So, uh, you know, father paying son... <laughs> Interest, interesting role reversal, interesting times. Yeah, well, that's that's what's been happening, I suppose. It's this, this sort of new relationships and new roles. Um, what about Prince William and Prince Harry at this point, Roy? We've had a little bit of time now since the Queen's funeral. Mm. Where do we stand, do you think? Where do you think they stand? What is the future? Well, it's a, it's a topic which I've written a lot about in the Sunday Times, and it was interesting seeing that interaction over... Um, you know, the funeral, I think, uh, my understanding is things are pretty tense and pretty frosty still between them, which is a shame. We've also had these new revelations in my, my excellent colleague, Valentine Lowe, on The Times. He's written a wonderful new book called Courtiers, which looks at this relationship. And it, 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 there's an instance in it where Val goes back to uh, 2019, when we had just got back from Pakistan with uh, William uh, and, and Catherine. And Harry had given this interview to Tom Bradby for ITV, um, talking about the relationship and how they were on different paths. And William was very struck by this and thought, you know, I, I can see my brothers in more crisis than I thought. Uh, and WhatsApped him and said, I'd love to come and see you, let's talk about it. And Harry instantly agreed. And then Val reports in the book and claims in the book that he said, you know, who do you need to tell if you want to come and see me? William says, I have to tell my private secretary because we need to clear my schedule. And Harry said no, because he was worried it was going to be leaked. And that gives you an insight into just how tricky and perhaps lacking in trust that relationship now is. Yeah, it's just how insecure they feel about each other's parties, which is very interesting. You'd think just two brothers could speak without there being anyone else, to be fair, but maybe that doesn't work that way when you're in the royal family. It's an interesting... You know, people have said to me many times that family, rather than just pick up the phone and, and chat, very often they'll send each other memos via red boxes, private right. secretaries.
Oh my goodness. Different ways of doing things. Isn't it just? <laughs> but yeah, one rule for one and that's just unusual. But as you said, this book, it's it's relatively controversial. Bombshell books, we've heard a lot of that in the past couple of weeks with a lot of royal, royal books. Um, Prince Andrew certainly gets mentioned, let's put it that way. <laughs> he certainly does. It's a great book. It's out uh, later this week and I've actually read most of it. And uh, there is a very interesting section on Prince Andrew which might not come as a surprise to everyone. Uh, Val claims in the book that Prince Andrew is notorious in you know, the household, the royal household, for ignoring good advice, sometimes being not quite as polite as he could be to a lot of people. Um, and it, it, people have spoken quite frankly about what it was like working with him and being around him. There's a, a, an interesting anecdote about how he... The Queen was in an engagement one day with a lot of soldiers and it was pouring with rain and, and uh, her private office had forgotten to bring an umbrella for her. So her press secretary at the time went to go and ask one of the soldiers if they might be able to find an umbrella. And Val claims in the book that um, Prince Andrew kicked off and said, you know, how dare you ask a soldier to get an umbrella and later told the Queen that he had been asked to go and find her an umbrella. Um, and the Queen apparently says to uh, her press secretary over a meeting, did you ask the Duke of York to get you an umbrella? And he said, what do you think, ma'am? Do you think I did? And the Queen let it lie. It's a, it's a great book. It's sort of making Artie's running around then telling tales and kind of protecting his corner. I know a, a terribly unflattering nickname was revealed in the book. I think they, they described him as uh, his buffoon highness, which is terrible i mean it's just there's no nice way of describing that it's not great i, I i've heard a few other nicknames for him which really are worse we'll okay. leave it there <laughs> this, this is the one we could uh, broadcast this morning but anyway okay right thank you very much Pleasure. indeed for that uh,